morning, church, and welcome to our resurrection service on Sunday, which is Easter Sunday. And we're so looking forward to seeing many of you today at our drive-in service. Some of you, of course, won't be able to make it. And this video is shot specifically with three um, things in mind. First of all, I want to share a word to those who aren't able to join us today. Secondly, I want to share a word with those who are planning to come to our drive-in service today at 10 o'clock. And thirdly, I want to close with a brief uh, passage from God's Word, Luke 24, a devotion, and then uh, a hymn that's one of my favorites. Well, it's Saturday afternoon, late afternoon, and I'm shooting this video here so that we can have something for you first thing in the morning when you get up. Um, some of the things I want to share with you, first of all, to those who aren't going to be joining us today, it's totally okay, and we understand. If you can't make it out today, or you don't feel comfortable coming out today, or if you're not well enough to come out today, I want to let you know that as soon as our morning service is over, I'm going to take the video that we have shot of the service, I'm going to bring it into my office, and I'm going to work on that and then upload it for you. So I'm hoping to have that done by lunchtime or just after. So I would say if you would at least at the latest look for that around 1 o'clock, if not before, an email will go out and we'll have the morning service uploaded uh, for you. There is no pressure at all to come to the drive-in service today. It's something that we've put out to our church family, to many of you, and you've responded. Um, boy, about 90% of you in a positive way. Uh, again, with what our state and local officials are saying, church is essential, and we can use that discernment that we've been given and the testimony that we have in our community, and especially those here within the household of faith, God's family, to be a blessing. So as we prepare for drive-in church uh, today, I want to at least share what we've already shared through email with you. There are two main restrictions with drive-in church today. That's number one, come as you are, but stay in your car. Goodness, you can come in your pajamas if you want. No one's going to judge you. You can come with your big old cup of coffee. Uh, you can come with your Bible. You can come with bedhead, and no one will even know it. Sit in your car, stay in your car, come as you are, and it's going to be great. The second restriction is this. None of the buildings are going to be open. Uh, they'll be locked, so there'll be no bathroom facilities available. Again, this is why we're having our service at 10 in the morning, and it'll go to about 1040, a maybe a little before or a little after, no later than 1045. So we're going to have a service that will encourage you, that will please the Lord, and that we believe will uh, hopefully speak God's Word to you that you can use this week. So for those of you coming in today, those are the two main restrictions that I want to share with you. Come as you are, but stay in your car. All buildings locked. So there's no need to get out. And if you need to go to the restroom, again, uh, please do all of those things before you come. And I know that you'll enjoy the service a lot more. Now, there are a few other things as you pull into uh, to, um, the parking lot today, as you come to drive in church. There are a couple of things you need to know. We have, of course, two entrances into our property. Uh, whichever one you come through, you're going to see three men in the parking lot. That's Brian Stanley, Gary Weber, or Maury Cravey. When you see these men, they are going to direct you where you need to go. Uh, there are two stipulations with this. If you are driving a car or a smaller vehicle, we want all smaller vehicles, all cars, to park directly in front of the fellowship hall or in the parking spaces just behind that. And again, this is where we normally park our church vans, but those have been cleared out. So all cars will be directed to park in front of the fellowship hall and then right behind it. Now, if you're a, a van, you're an SUV, you're a truck, you're a larger vehicle, we want you to park in the grassy area just behind uh, where the cars will park or to the side, which would be by the chapel. All cars that are parked will be facing the fellowship hall. So your windshield, your steering wheel, you should be facing the fellowship hall when you come in. And again, Brian, Maury, and Gary will direct all traffic coming in. They'll make sure that you um, are able to have a good spot. Now, the one important thing that I haven't mentioned yet, but I want to mention it right now. When you come into church tomorrow, you need to tune your radio to 101.7 FM. 101.7 FM. This is where you're going to be able to hear the service live. You're going to see us right there. Keep your windows up. If you want to keep your air running, that's fine. It's supposed to be in the in the high 60s tomorrow um, or later today. It's supposed to be good weather, so it won't be 
unbearable. Um, but if you would like to hear the service very clearly, 101.7 FM. We tested this on Friday. We went to all points around the property in the grassy area, Fellowship Hall by the chapel, loud and clear. You're going to love it. It's going to sound great. Uh, we're going to spoil you tomorrow. You can come as you are, um, bed, head, pajamas, coffee and all, and your Bible. Um, and we're going to spoil you. You're going to love the service tomorrow. I know it's going to be a great blessing to you. Also, so as they direct you, the parking lot opens at 930. So you can begin coming to find your place. The men will be here earlier. So when you come in, car down front, larger vehicles in the back. Uh, also, our service plan is much like a normal Sunday. A uh, normal Sunday goes like this. We welcome everyone. Uh, we read scripture together. Our scripture tomorrow is Matthew 28, verses 1 through 8. We'll read that together. Uh, we pray. And then after we pray, Pastor Chris and Pastor Sam, Caleb, Miss Donna, are going to provide music. And Caleb on the drums, Pastor Sam on the guitar, Miss Donna on the piano. And there'll be three songs that are familiar, uh, two verses each, and I believe they'll be a great blessing to you. Then after that, we'll have a special song and then we'll have a Bible message. Uh, after the message is over, we're going to have an opportunity for those who would like to give. Uh, Gary, Brian, and Maury will have offering plates with gloves, and they will go uh, to cars that uh, indicate maybe you lift your hand out the window and you could slip a, a, a check or, or money that you want to do to give to the church, and that would be okay. And don't worry, it, many of you have given online or you've you've sent your tithe and your offering into the church. We just want to give an opportunity to those who haven't been able to do that. And I want to pause here for a moment and say thank you for being so faithful. Uh, someone stopped by earlier this week and said, you know, I know the church is a ministry and I know you do things for the Lord, but the church is also a business. They have to pay bills. The lights have to come on. Um, we have staff and they have to be paid. And we're, we, I just want to do my part to support my church and boy, I was so thankful for that and just uh, very humbled. You know, we're all called to be faithful. And whether money comes in or not, we're going to be here serving the Lord and serving you as we serve the Lord. But what a great blessing it is to serve the Lord together, to know that we are doing something uh, not just for ourselves. We're doing this for the Lord. And what a blessing that is. So after the message, we'll take the offering. Music will play. They'll go between the cars. You indicate uh, if you'd like to give. And then after that's over and the men come back, I'll have a special word to say, a dismissal, and then we'll pray. Now, after prayer, much like we came into the parking lot, after prayer, we're going to direct um, by rows the cars that will leave. We're going to have the front row dismissed, and those are ones that came in uh, with the smaller vehicles. We'll have all those dismissed to the side, and then we'll have those in the grass area be dismissed. Now remember, there are two uh, exits uh, going out of the church, and our men will be in the parking lot to try to address that and to help you. So please help us out. Wherever you park, you're going to be able to hear the service. So make sure 101.7 FM, as you listen, will give you those instructions. You'll be able to hear them. Even if you um, are a little distance and you don't see us clearly, you, you'll be able to hear us very clearly. You know, we're so excited about having the service. Um, it's something that's been a matter of prayer. Uh, we've been planning it, but a little unsure. But we're so thankful for our state and local officials. As we've said, they deem church essential. And drive in church, I made sure to call our town hall, did this last week, and then went and spoke to those at Clay County and to ask them, and they're like 100%. So I'm very thankful that we live in this state, that we live in this town, and that we live in this great country where we can still worship the Lord. Now, in many states and many places around our country right now, uh, some of those citizens in those states are told, you can't even go to church. And I know many of you who can't come today, you're watching online, and I'm thankful for that. This is a great means. We're going to continue to do this, but I'm also thankful that we have the chance uh, to use some common sense as we go to the store, grocery store. Uh, goodness, we're sitting in our vehicles with the windows rolled up, not exiting or breathing on anybody. We're here, and we're worshiping the Lord. And, you know, as Americans, but even more as Bible believers, as Christians, 
we have a great opportunity. I believe this is going to bring our church closer together. And even though we don't like the distance, even though this has been difficult, this is the fourth Sunday that we've not had church in the normal way. And some of you we haven't seen in all those weeks since we met together in early March. But I pray that this will be a blessing to you. And if you're watching the service today, or if you're here in attendance, I know that the Lord will use this time to encourage your heart. Um, so again, come as you are, but stay in your car. And then all the building facilities will be locked, and only those in the parking lot or the pastoral staff there will be able to, um, I guess, be out and about. Let me give you a verse this morning. For those of you who are going to have to wait to, to enjoy a service, I wanted to leave you with a passage and then with a hymn. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to Luke chapter 24? Luke t chapter number 24. And uh, again, we're almost done here. Just want this to be an encouragement to you. Look at verse number 1, Luke 24. Now this is Resurrection Day. This is Easter. This is unlike any Easter any of us have ever encountered or around the world. But I believe that the world is going to hear the message of hope today. And that is that Christ, He lives. He arose. And not only has He risen um, in the world today, we know that from Scripture, but He lives in our heart. Uh, look at Luke 24 and see what Luke writes to us. He says this, Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. you got to think that as these women, we learn, they're coming. Um, and again, it had been guarded. A seal had been put upon the tomb. Um, they were afraid, as um, the authority said, that someone might come and steal the body of Jesus because he said he would rise again. And as they got to the tomb, no guards, and there was uh, no stone in front of the entrance. It was open. You got to imagine the, although these folks followed the Lord, they loved the Lord, they believed Him. We learn later in this chapter, um, it wasn't until later that they remembered what the Lord had said. Look at verse number four. Um, it says, And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Here are two messengers of the Lord, two angels. So they stick their heads in, they're looking all around, and they don't see Jesus. They had just seen him three days earlier, beaten, smitten, his body torn apart, bloodied upon the cross, nailed there at Calvary with untold number of people watching him die. And now they come to the tomb and he's gone. And you imagine it says here they were perplexed. They were like, what's going on? What's happening? They were probably not only afraid, they were um, they were amazed. They were confused. They didn't know what was going on. And as they were afraid, verse 5, and bowed their faces to the earth, they said unto them, and I love this. I, I love this line. The angel said, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Who are you looking for? Uh, verse 6, He's not here. He's risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again? He says, Don't you remember? Who are you looking for? He's not here. He's risen. He said, Three days and I'm out. Three days and I'm risen. Three days. And he said upon the cross, It is finished. Aren't you thankful on Resurrection Sunday? that he got up out of the grave. But how wonderful it must be, or it must have been to be those who were first to the tomb. Can you imagine that? I mean, it just gives me chills thinking about it. These men, these women, who then would tell their kids or their grandkids, or they would hear the stories. They were there. How awesome this is. Verse 8, so telling, it says this, And they remembered his words. And returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. And it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. 
and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Boy, it was hard for them. They had seen so much. They were shut down. They were shut in. They had run away. But note here, verse 12, Then arose Peter, Peter who at the last instance we saw him, he had denied the Lord. He told Christ in the upper room with great boldness, I'll defend you to death. Nothing will come between me and you. I will be with you. I will go with you. And Jesus plainly told him, No, you won't. You're going to deny me. And I think that's a story for many of us. We often think how strong in faith we are, how great we may be in our walk with Christ, and yet we're finite. We're, we have feet of clay. We're sinful. We're like Peter. And at the last instance we saw Peter, he was crying, weeping, the Bible says, bitterly. Uh, he had regrets. And in repentance we see that here's Peter now running Verse 12, he arose, ran to sepulcher, stooping down, he beheld the linen cloths laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which has come to pass. It was so amazing that here's Peter, the disciples. Of course, we know the story of the one that was there alone saying, where have they taken my Lord? What have they done with his body? And of course, it was Jesus. And he said, don't touch me. You know, I haven't sent it back to my father, but... Go tell him. Go tell his disciples that he's risen. What a message for this morning, for today. In the world that we live where we haven't seen each other, we've been distanced. We've, I won't say been in fear, but we're perplexed. We don't really know what's going on, what tomorrow might hold. We're hearing talking heads say all of these things, but ultimately, like these people, we're still stooping down, looking in, beholding, and boy, it still amazes us. The old story never gets old. Isn't that a blessing? Well, there's a favorite hymn that I have. And this book here, this is from my dad. This is I've had this for many years. This is a hymn book we all grew up with, the old Redback and the All-American Church Hymnal. And of course, I have my other one over here that we had as well. Uh, but one of my favorite hymns, um, it's on page number 68, and this, this song is written, and it's entitled, He Lives. And the story behind the song, I just want to share this with you, and then we'll close. Um, Alfred Ackley is the author of this particular hymn, He Lives. Um, he wrote this, he was a musician, and he was a preacher, and in 1933, he wrote this song. Uh, it's really, in some hymn books, is known by this title, I Serve a Risen Savior. Um, but in this particular one, the red back, it's entitled, He Lives. So at the time of the writing of this hymn, it was in the early 1930s, much like a time that it is right now. Um, Ackley was challenged by a young student who was confused as to why Christians worship someone who had died centuries earlier. Ackley basically is quoted as saying, quote, He lives, I tell you. He's not dead, but He lives here and now. Jesus Christ is more alive today than ever before. I can prove it by my own experience in my life, as well as the testimony of countless thousands, end quote. Fueled by the student's questions, Ackley sat down at his desk and began to write the lyrics, the words to the song. The refrain, the chorus here, is joyous. It reminds us that Jesus rose from the dead as He promised, and He lives today in the heart of every believer. And I grew up singing the song. I'm not going to sing it right now to you. We're going to have some singing in the morning, um, just a little bit. But I want to read the lyrics to this song, and I hope it's encouragement to you. Think about what's going on in our world today, and then think about the lyrics to the song, and then we'll be done. This is what he wrote here. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. Second verse. In all the world around me, I see His loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that He is leading through all the stormy blast, the day of His appearing will come at last. 
man, that is, that's great. And what truth that it speaks to us right now, finally on the last verse and then the refrain. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how? I know He lives. He lives within my heart. Mr. Ackley, who wrote this hymn by his own experience, it just came out of him. It oozed out of him. Although we're living in some worrying, troublesome times, perilous times, we don't know what tomorrow holds, we know He lives. What a great day for us to worship the Lord. A morning just like this when Jesus rose from the grave. Here we are. We're about to worship together this morning. We're about to see one another for the first time and some of us over a month. And I'm so happy to be a part of the family of God. I'm even more happy to know that my Savior is not made of stone or wood. I don't have to go to my God who is on a field somewhere of play. He doesn't reside in Hollywood or in Washington, D.C. My Lord, my Savior, my God is alive and well, and He's coming again. And I want to be ready to meet Him, but He lives within my heart today. Does He live in your heart? If so, boy, you have something to shout about. We have something to rejoice about. Even though we're not sure what tomorrow holds, we know who holds tomorrow. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, when it was good, today when it's unsure and tomorrow we don't know what it holds but he's coming he's coming he lives today well i hope to see you this morning and i can't wait to have the service with you today it's going to be wonderful and for those of you that aren't able to make it i want you to know that as soon as our service is over i'm going to upload the video and you'll be able to enjoy that 101.7 101.7 FM this morning for our driving crowd. We're looking forward to seeing you. God bless you. We love you. We miss you. You can always email me anytime, pastor at freedomkeystone.com. And we look forward to seeing you again. Until then, keep looking up. God bless. Bye-bye.